let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be here. We're thankful for this wonderful time to serve you. This wonderful day. And now, Lord, as we come to celebrate here this morning, let us put all the cares and all the things aside and look wholly and completely to you. Be with us in the later in this session as we have our deacon election. And, Lord, we just ask now that you bless it. Watch over all of us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. We do want to welcome you this morning. Hope that you've had a wonderful time during our Sunday school hour. And hope that this won't be a last time for us coming, that you're coming to our church. We always got a place for you. And so, again, we want to welcome you. If you're visiting with us, we, we got several visitors today. We especially want to welcome you to our service. At the end of our service today, we will be electing deacons. And as I said, we will be passing out the ballots after the last song. And we'll be getting some instruction there. And so we ask that you pray and be a matter of prayer on that. Also, we ask that uh, we'll be passing out the proposed church budget for next year, and that will be done at the conclusion of the service. Take it home, study it, pray over it, and as I said, it will be presented for uh, adoption next Sunday morning. So be in prayer for that. Also, we're going to have a special event next Sunday night. Tommy, it looks like it's going to be you and I in the choir right now. Unless somebody comes and signs up, maybe John will be where he can help us then. But uh, we need, it says Mingo's got talent. And I know that Mingo has talent. As I said, I always hear around here, well, nobody ever gives me an opportunity to do anything. Well, now here is your chance. And last I saw as of this morning, unless the list is filled up in the last two or three minutes, there's about two or three of us. Please come and be a, a sign up if you sing. We'd love to have you. If you do an ensemble like a trio, a quartet, duet, fine. If you play a musical instrument, fine. We would love to have you next Sunday evening. And that will be on the 27th at 6 o'clock. Be a part of our Mingo's Got Talent. I think it will be a wonderful program. So come and do that. I think that you will enjoy it, and I think it will be a wonderful time. In relation to that, we're going to have a period of fellowship immediately following, and so we're asking all our families to bring refreshments for that as well. And so we're having a, it'll be a wonderful time for us to close out the church year. So come, looking forward to being blessed in that time. I also want to mention several other special events that will be occurring in the next several months. Also on the 24th of September will be our homecoming. It's hard to realize that homecoming is a little over a month away. And one of our own, Beth Bess, will be sharing with us and sharing the message of that day. Now, homecoming goal for Building Fund is $20,000. So be in prayer for that. And then on October the 8th through the 11th, we'll have Reverend Robert Ivey. Many of you know Robert. He is the associate Director of Missions for the New South River Baptist Association. And he'll be having revival. And some of you to go to the meetings know that Robert can be a go-getter. And so uh, we're looking forward to have several wonderful events. And there'll be other things that we will announce as well. So remember all the things that we're having and just this wonderful time. And let's just enjoy each other's fellowship. Now so I'm going to ask Josh to come and lead us in our first hymn. Psalm 104. Woo! That's loud. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O my soul. Let's begin our worship by singing hymn number 16, O Worship the King. Standing, please.
your friends and neighbors. This in here, right? Quick. Hey, ladies. Everybody get up here. Come on. It's all right. Miss Cindy went to a conference. Listen, listen. Miss Cindy went to a conference this week with some people from church and all, and it talked about our eyes to see. We all got eyes. But does it know what it means for us when we have our eyes to see? It was at a conference, and we talked about what the, um, the Carolina missions offerings are for. And the word the verse that they used was, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for, their har- for they are ready for white for harvest. And that's out of John 4, 3. And what they used the mission offerings for is for disaster relief, like when the hurricane comes. They went and they did work. They used it for the mental, the mental, Lord have mercy, the medical and the dental buses. And they used it for different ministry that's not in the United States. And they have what they call a deep impact. Deep impact is like mission fuse and illuminate like they do in Clinton, but it's just a different name. But it's on the order of the same thing. So we want to pray for our missions this week as we do our offerings. It's what they use and they go for because they go out and they help people. They build ramps for people. They redo houses for people, like where the floods had come with the hurricanes and tore all their houses out and they helped rebuild their houses. So let's have our prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the day that you've given us. Dear Lord, we've had prayers that's been answered in this last week. Dear Lord, we lift them up to you as well. Dear Lord, thank you for our missions and thank you for what they go for and the offerings that they do to help different things and the different organizations that we do. And dear Lord, be with Mr. Strickland this morning as he delivers our missions. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 301, I Am Resolved. This one has five stanzas in it, folks, so it gives you plenty of time to get your offering out. Stand, please.
wonderful day you've allowed us to come to your house and worship. Just pray, Lord, that you'll be with each and every one that's here this morning. Guide us and direct us, Lord. I pray that you'll be with the many sick, Lord, the lost. You know each and every need. Just pray this morning also, Lord, that you'll be with the pastors who bring us our morning message. Guide and direct him as well. Pray now, Lord, as we come to this time of the worship service, we have a chance to give back. I just pray that you'll help us give back accordingly. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, ladies. Until then, my heart will go on singing. Until today, God calls me home. Old Stuart Hamlin song, Until Then. Thank you for playing that beautiful thing. Before we have our scripture, I have a couple of notes I want to share with you. It says this, John and Victoria would like to thank everyone for the gifts and support of our baby shower and for prayers during our baby's arrival. We are thankful for our church family. And understand that uh, Mr. Tyson and the family came home last night. And so we rejoice. A lot of prayers were done for John and Victoria and baby Tyson. And they're home. And just continue to pray for them. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And also we have another thank you note here we want to share with you this morning. Thanks to everyone at Mingo for each card, call, and kind deeds of visits during my surgery. But most of all for your prayers and support. Continue to remember me and Betty as I continue to recover. Yours in Christ, Boogie. And we're glad that Boogie is doing better now. So we rejoice in these things. It's good to have praise reports, isn't it? Amen. At this time, Mackenzie McClam's going to have our scripture and pray.
Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. And I ask that you stand as we read God's word. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house while, where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Thank you. May God richly bless the reading and the hearing of our word. You may be seated. At this time, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. We didn't give a praise report for uh, John, Victoria, and little Tyson. And so we're thankful for that. Praise the Lord. And if you have those listed on the back of your bulletin, or the, uh, or the others that you need to share with us at this time. Dr. Elizabeth Bass, the John A. Mann family, others, Tia Phillips, others, Israel, Jerusalem, and the United States of America, especially in this time. You need Doris Carr. Others? Okay. Others? Okay, if not, Mackenzie. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and for everything that you've given us. We just thank you for allowing us to come to your house this morning and learn more about you and worship. We just pray that you'll be with those that we've mentioned, those who are going through difficult times right now or are sick or have lost loved ones, Lord. You know every need, and we just pray that you'll be with them and give those people um, peace and healing, Lord. You know every need, and we just know that you can heal them. We just pray that you'll be with us throughout the remainder of this yes. service and just open our hearts to hear what it is that Mr. Strickland's going to tell us this yes. morning. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Our choir is going to do an old song, I'm Free Again. And I hope you enjoy it and just listen to it and let the Lord lead you on. Hold just a minute.
Thank you, choir and musicians. I've got to take a breath after that one. That one has that was a breath taker, but it's a pretty old song. That one goes somebody said, That's an old, old, old song. Well, when you're dealing with an old, old, old preacher, that's like old, old, old songs. And sometimes it's not anything bad with the old, old, old songs. That song had a good message. Thank God I'm free from every sin for Satan kept my led my soul astray. And yes, Satan has led all our souls astray. And isn't it wonderful? Thank you, choir. Thank you for that wonderful song. I'm free again. You know, we've been in computer age for a long time. That's kind of a common thing. But you know, we know the consequences of power surges. You know, there's times our current will go on, off, and then it'll come back on with a burst of power. And sometimes that can destroy computers. It can destroy electronics. Sometimes it can damage heat and air conditioning units. And make a mess of refrigeration. But you know, for that reason, we have surge protectors. We bought a big old one. You remember when they had the bad storm, knocked all the stuff off at the parsonage over there, the TV, the computers, the phone was knocked off the wall and burned everything up. That was about six or seven years ago, all that stuff happened. So we bought a $100 surge protector. The only problem about the thing, it was so heavy, you couldn't lift it. And it's sitting in our room with a computer now. I didn't know they made them that heavy. like taking a ton of bricks. But it's supposed to guard against you. You can have them for the whole house. But you know, sometimes physically we have bursts of energy. And sometimes we want it. Sometimes we get our energy and we go saying, that song though, as I said, ought to got you some good energy. As the old preacher said years ago, if that, if that uh, didn't light your fire, your wood is wet. And so we know maybe we need to have a drying out period on some of that. But you know, there are so-called energy drinks that people take. You can get these little things that look like just about like that. Well, somebody said they're full of caffeine, just like a burst of caffeine. Years ago, there was a man on the commercial, and he got him. He could barely get out of bed, and he was just a dragging along. Couldn't get anything, looked unkempt and everything. And next thing he do, he took a thing of that little energy drink about like that, and there he was well-dressed and going out ready to meet the day. You know, in all these things, these are good, but they run out. You know, I used to say with our children, I wish I could bottle the energy of our little young ones that we have here. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing of where they just go continuously? You know, we adults would love to have some of that energy and all. But you know, many things in energy are just a temporary fix. All those energy drinks will let us down. Eventually that cup of coffee, that glass of iced tea, will eventually let you down. And sometimes those things that lead you up will make you worse than ever. They're temporary. But you know, that can happen in this Christian's end too. We could have a wonderful service. We could have good singing like we just had. We could have all the things to revive. We could have those wonderful mountaintop retreats and all of those things like that. But then when we come down to the valley, sometimes there's always a let down. You know, Jesus knew that by ourselves, we could not go on our own strength. In John 15, 26, he tells us this, But when the comfort is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and share a bear witness, because he has been with me from the beginning. That's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 26, Jesus tells his disciples, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. You know, I want us to look at the third person of the trend, the coming of the power of the Holy Spirit, as presents Mackenzie read the scripture in the second chapter of Acts. We as Southern Baptists sometimes stay away from that kind of scripture. We leave that to our Pentecostal friends. Oh, we're going to be talking about all sorts of things, the Holy Spirit. But friends, whether you are a Baptist, a Methodist, a Pentecostal, Christian free will, or whatever denomination was, if you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit of God in your life, if you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit in your church, if you do not have the Spirit filling of the Spirit, you have nothing. You have nothing. Friends, we need to ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we do things in our churches and we say, 
Lord, please bless what we have done. We've done so and so, and we've done so and so. You know, bless our mess, I reckon you could really say. What we should say, Lord, where do you want us to go? Where do you want us through the Holy Spirit to lead in this meeting? What do you want us to do? It's good to ask the Lord's blessing, but sometimes we need to ask the Lord before we do it rather than afterward. But the Lord just put a stamp for Lord, we just want you to bless what we've done. But first we need to say, Lord, where do you want us to be? This morning I want us to look on the whole good, wonderful day. We're electing deacons. And we need deacons that are spirit-led, amen, spirit-filled, amen. And we'll rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to direct them in whatever doing leading this church. Do I get an amen on that? Amen. amen on that. This is what we do. We just don't put names in slots. We're not filling a popularity contest. But we're sticking spirit-filled people to fill these positions. To fill it that will lead and be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. But I want us to look at the Holy Spirit. In this scripture, there was some power. We talked about the power surge. The power of, of preparation. You know, the first thing they talked about in the power of preparation was patience. In Acts 1, 4, it said, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You've heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost many days hence. And in Luke 24, 49, said, And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued from power on high. In other words, wait for the power of the Holy Spirit of God to come upon you. Wait for that power to come. You know, one of the hardest things, we preached this last Sunday about being stuck in Cincinnati. And, you know, I talked to Larry Pope, and Larry said he got stuck in Cincinnati. I don't know if you've ever been to Cincinnati, but we got stuck there, the ball, stuck there in traffic for two and a half hours as I preached last Sunday. And there again, we feel like we're not going. Sometimes we feel like we're not going. But the Lord is the one that sends the power. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes God's timing is not our timing. And we need to wait till God's timing to do that fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, I said last Sunday, there's always three answers to prayer. Yes, the Lord responds immediately, and he does. Sometimes he says, no, this is not within my will. But sometimes he tells us, wait. In other words, we need to try to seek the power of the Holy Spirit rather than taking everything in our own hands. In other words, we must realize that God is in charge. The Lord is in charge of this church. The Lord is in charge of everything. We learned from the scriptures from the Tower of Babel. And when we went, Cheryl and I went to that creation museum, we saw some things and replicas and pictures of the power of Babel where people thought they could be God. They took everything in their own hands. And God dealt with them and let them know that he was in charge. Said he, King James says he confounded the languages. He caused people to speak in different languages. And so we need to realize that wait on the Lord and his power. Scripture we quote as our scripture last week was, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. Remember that power comes from being prepared, seeking the Lord's will in whatever we do. In other words, Lord, where do you want us to be? Lord, who do you want us to be for deacon? Lord, what do you want us to do in this church? And we ask the presence and the conviction of the power of the Holy Spirit of God upon us that we will do these things. Lord, we ain't wait for a word from you. But then another thing we need to prepare for is with prayer. It said in Acts 1.12, it says that these, and that's talking about disciples, continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. And the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, was with his brethren. One of the last mentions of Mary, the mother of Jesus. They were praying people. In other words, when we want the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to bathe it constantly in a spirit of prayer. We are a praying church. But we need to pray more for the Lord's will, for the power of the Holy Spirit of God to come upon us. You know, Jesus told disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, He says, pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And we know from when we did that that they couldn't stay open. They went and sleep. And then he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
Friends, today we must be in a constant spirit of prayer. I've known people that fail miserably. I've known churches that fail miserably because they did not seek the Lord's will in prayer. Instead of having a power surge, they had a brownout. You ever been in a brownout? Many years ago, Cheryl's dad had a little place down at the beach in Emerald Isle. And uh, he's been gone over 21 years, so it's been way before that. And we went down there for a few days and turned on the lights. Instead of them brightly glowing, they got browner and duller and duller until they just about dimmed down to nothing. So we called, called her mama first, they were called the electric company. The REA was down there, that division. And that man wasn't too happy coming out late at night on a weekend night to come fix those things. But what it was, salt air had got on the lines and corroded them and caused them to brown out. And you know, that can be just as dangerous for equipment and air conditions and all that. But sometimes, if we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit and get the right power, our power can get to be duller and duller and duller and duller. In other words, we can just dull right down to we're not doing anything. Oh, my God. They asked the preacher one time that preached this church for about 50 years. He was a real old man. He said, what is going to be your last sermon that you're going to preach at this church? He said this. I'm taking the scripture that Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane. Sleep on now. Take your rest. So we need to be alert. Sometimes when we don't link in with the Holy Spirit, we try to do it on. We're just like that light bulb. We get brown and duller and duller. So if we need to ask, Lord, where do you want us? And then we need to be in a spirit of unity. And hear me out on this. One accord. It says that they went on one accord and they prayed. You know, our country is in a bad fix right now. I've got so I have sworn off looking at the news. I don't know where you have it. I've got tired of it. I don't even want to hear it. I say, well, you're not informed. Maybe I'm not, but I'm just tired of it. I say, well, that don't bother us. One reason the world is like that is because they're controlled by Satan himself. People do not know the Lord. They have not had an experience with Jesus Christ. Well, they may be a church member. But they are caught up with the world and with the devil. And the devil is controlling all of these evil things that are going on within our United States and in our world today. Satan is having free reign in it. And the thing is, though, what about us as the church? That's good and well. You know, Dr. Randy White, our director of missions, preached a sermon that impressed my mind years ago. I preached it myself one time. Said the church has presence, but no voice. We as the churches are too busy, called up with things in our own lives for the world to go to hell. Friends, today we're more interested in committee meetings. We're more interested in programs and activities. And these next, we're more interested in all of these things and while we are squabbling, while we are disagreeing, and while we are debating all of these things, the world is getting further and further and further out of control. And where is the church? We're in the walls having our meetings, singing our songs, giving our devotionals, and going on with business as usual, and we get upset over this, and we get set up at Friends, hear me out on this. The Lord didn't die for the organizations of the church. The Lord didn't die for the Sunday school. He didn't die for the youth ministry. He didn't die for the music ministry or the mission programs or the various committees, the deacons, or whatever committees we have. The Lord saved his life and created the church the church lifted up, the church glorified, and the church unified. And that is what the Lord died for. And we need to pull together. And we need to work together. Because the time is getting short. And the world is getting worse and worse and worse. And we need to be on the front. The old song says, like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brethren, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are all united, all one body. We one in hope and charity, one in charity and doctrine. We need to forge on, so to be prepared. We must wait on the Lord until he speaks to us. We must be in constant prayer. And yes, we must be in a spirit of unity. But let's move on. Not only is there the power of preparation, but there's the power of presentation. You know, friends, this was a God event. 
You know, we've had many God events. In other words, things that we could not do on our own. And it said this in Joel 2.28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your daughters and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. In other words, this will be timed. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preached about the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, quoted from, the, from Joel there. Friends, the power of the Holy Spirit is God's business. And we need to take it. God's business. The Holy Spirit points and glorifies Jesus Christ. It points people to Jesus. And it convicts people of sin. And yes, it glorifies the Father. You know, I've heard people say, well, we can control the Holy Spirit. We can turn it on and off like we want to. Wrong. The Holy Spirit is beyond what we have. Yes, on that great day of Pentecost, the Lord sent the mighty rushing winds and, 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 and all. And it was just a wonderful day. And people heard in their own language. You know, a few minutes ago, I talked about this power of Babel, where he confounded, confused the languages. But on that day, that miracle here, and they heard in their own languages. And friends, today, this is the time of the Lord, that he come. So we need to be careful. But today, God still works through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's no manuals on how to do the Spirit. You better be careful. It comes from God. It cannot be, as the Scripture says, it cannot be bought and sold into open market. But I was to realize in our church and other churches, that the giver of the power of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit of God comes from God Himself. And we need to realize that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But from this came new strength. You know, disciples commissioned on that day of great commission. Jesus says, says Ye shall receive power, and after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Wait, as we said in the earlier part. And after the power of the Holy Ghost, you shall be my witnesses. When the power of the Holy Ghost come, all the world was turned upside down. It was a new possible. And things that were impossible before became possible. You know, our choir sung some time ago, nothing is impossible. When you put your trust in God, friends, today we can do God-sized tasks. He's given us tasks in this church. He's given us a building. For, we've had a centennial. We've had... Had a, music, a drama. We've had many things that have been God-sized tasks. Mission programs all over the place. These are God-sized tasks. But friends, today, we need to realize that when God is in charge, He can do these things if we will seek Him and will seek the power of the Holy Spirit in this coming church year. We have many good things ahead of us, but we've got to seek the Lord instead of our own power. The problem we have in any church, this church and other churches, is we try to do it on our own. You hear where I'm coming from? And we boast about what we're doing. We can't do that. We have got to seek the power of the Holy Spirit if we are going to forge on to that strength. But then it gives them a new understanding. In 1 John 5, 6 says, This is he that came, Jesus, by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water and blood, and his spirit, but in its spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. In other words, on that day of baptizing Jesus, the Trinity was there. The Son went down into the water, and when he straightway, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. A dove descended from the power of the Holy Spirit to bear witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit convicts people of sin. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit that you are led to Jesus Christ that you realize that you are a sinner bound for hell, that you have no hope within yourself and you cannot do it on yourself. And at that time that you come to accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit draws you to Jesus Christ. It's through that. You know, Jesus can open understanding. He opened to understanding to disciples on that day after his resurrection. And today the Holy Spirit will give you new insight into the Scriptures. The Holy Spirit will convict you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. The Holy Spirit will guide you in all the things. So today, we have a new presentation. But then finally, there's the power of proliferation. That's a big word. You know, many of us lived during the time of the Jimmy Carter administration in the late 70s. And there was one word he talked about, nuclear proliferation. I can't hardly say it and get it out of my mouth. 
That's a big word, isn't it? That long. Proliferation. What it means is things are growing and fast and moving fast. And friends, when the power of the Holy Spirit through the Great Commission takes on, the power of uh, Jesus' power will grow. The churches will grow if we seek that power. If we'll go. You know, the Lord used an old fisherman such as Simon Peter. Rough, crude, used to get his foot stuck in his mouth. To preach that message where 3,000 people were sold. And from that, it said the Lord added to the church daily as those that should be saved. Friends, today, the power of the Holy Spirit has growth. We will link into it and we will check into it. It will do. You know, we can see growth spiritually. We can see growth physically as well. But only through this. You know, I think about Billy Graham. You know, some of us some years ago went to the Billy Graham Museum. Up there in Charlotte, actually, the Billy Graham Library. And how the Lord used a farm boy on a dairy farm. And spoke to him. And used him to speak to the mighty, to kings, to rulers, to presidents, and yes, to the common people. And how many were won to Jesus Christ because he became a useful vessel. My prayer is that we will take the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that we too will be used as a useful vessel to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So today, are you suffering a power surge? You need to have, it may be a terrible thing with the electrical world, but in the spiritual world, we all need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. As I said, we need church leaders filled with the Holy Spirit. We need deacons filled with the Holy Spirit. And we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The song says, we have the power in the name of Jesus. We have the power in the name of the Lord. Those Satan rages will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Lord, today we are thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. We're thankful for the power that we have through that. A power that we can't have on earth, not to do on our own. Lord, today my prayer is for Mingo Baptist Church that we'll be filled in a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit of God. Of this church, that we'll take our eyes off ourselves, it will take our eyes off our differences, off of our little areas of influence that we have, of everything, and try to pull together and seek you and be led under the power of the Holy Spirit. But this morning, if there be one here that doesn't know you as Jesus Christ, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to touch that life, to convict them, to speak to them to the need to make this commitment. And Lord, again, there may be others that have to make and need to make decisions this morning. Speak to them again through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we're thankful for this spirit that's, that we have. Watch over us. Guide us and direct us. And we turn this invitation over to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our song is one of my favorites. And when we have the power of the Holy Spirit, we will have victory in Jesus Christ. If you do not know Jesus... My prayer is the Holy Spirit of God will speak to you today through the power to come accept Him as your Lord and Savior and make that decision for you. We have a world that's in terror, a world that's in turmoil, a world that's full of evil, a world that's full of hatred, a world that's full of meanness and wickedness. You just see it, you just turn on the news. But there is a better way, and that is knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you do not know Jesus today, there is no better time to come than right now, this very minute. Accept him to fall in, in baptism. Or maybe this message spoke to you about moving your membership. Maybe you're a member of another church. And you feel you can serve here better. We'll receive membership by a letter statement. Or maybe this message spoke to you in a very special way. Come by rededication, by prayer. Our invitation here, Mr. Josh. Hymn number 426, Victory in Jesus. Standing, please.
people said amen I think I want to shout after that don't you in other words we might be a little Pentecost that morning but there's nothing wrong with that is it brother Billy amen I'm excited I hope you are sometimes we get tired tired we get due but this message I hope speak to this time I'm going to ask you to be seated I'm going to have us to have a prayer and then I'm going to ask the deacons to pass out the ballot, and I'm going to give you a word or two of instruction, and after you fill them out, you're free to go. But let's have a sub- prayer first, and then we'll go pass them out. Dear Heavenly Father, we have been blessed today. Lord, we feel your presence here. We feel your power of the Holy Spirit of God here in this place this morning. Lord, as we come to elect deacons, may we speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit and the ones that you want us to have. Before we put our pen down and write those names and circle those numbers, please let us be guided through the power of your Holy Spirit. Send it to us in a mighty way, Lord, this morning. Lord, we ask that you be with our church this coming church year, that you speak to it in a special way. And now as we leave this place, be with us. Watch over us. And when everybody said, Amen. Hey, let's ask the deacons to come forward if you will pass out the ballots. While they're passing those out, the budgets will be given to you. After you're voting, the budgets will be available at the door. They'll be passing it out. Just hold it till we can get there and get everyone, and we'll give a few words of instruction. Are you glad you've been here today? Amen. Amen. It's been a wonderful trip. I'll wait and tell it after it gets it so everybody, some people not be leaving before we do it. But as soon as everybody gets copies of our, of our deacon election, and let me remind you this is for church members only, so, so just be sure to note that.
And there will be ushers stationed at this door and this door and that door. Does everybody have access to a copy? Okay. Circle, how many? Two. I've got it under nine before. And then after you circle them, fold the ballot this way. Give it to one of the ushers at the door. Again, make this a matter of prayer. And two that will best serve as deacons. So I'll give you that option. As soon as you're completed, you can be free to give to, to the ushers. Remember, we are having services tonight, so be in prayer for that. 